Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Osaka, Japan. Today we are taking a food pilgrimage to Kobe, which is about a 40 minute train ride from Osaka. So I'm, I am really looking forward to this day and we are walking to Osaka station now. I'm gonna jump on the train. I cannot wait to start eating in Kobe. 320. After a little bit of confusion and running back and forth from Osaka to Umeda Station, we finally got on our train and we are on our way en route to Kobe. When we arrive to Kobe, we are going to be meeting up with a chef who Dwight contacted and met through a friend of a friend and she has graciously agreed to show us around Kobe and to, to yeah, show us some spots to eat and introduce us to some delicious food. So that is the plan as soon as we arrive to Kobe. And that took right at about 30 minutes. I think I can smell some beef in the air. Welcome to Kobe, Japan. We met up with Laura Lee and we are now walking to her car and she's gonna take us somewhere to eat immediately. We just took a drive for about 30 minutes to a little town called Tarumi in Kobe. And we are here because they actually own a restaurant serving Kobe beef. And <laughs> we are going to their restaurant now. We are just entering their restaurant now, which is called La Chomon. And this is the signboard. And just look at that menu. And we have to say a major, major thank you because their restaurant is actually not open today. It's their day off, but they have really graciously agreed to open and just to, to present us and share with us some beef. Oh, hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Nice, hello. To, meet you. nice to meet you. I'm you. John. Uh, Mark. Mark? Yes. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> they have just brought over the fresh grill, that Japanese charcoal down below there, a clean grate. Our master chef. Oh, master chef. His name is Mr. Yassi. Oh, nice to meet you. Oh, <laughs> they just brought out a plate, a platter of different cuts of beef. And this one here is one of the rarest pieces. You can only get two or three kilograms out of a single cow. And just look at that marbleization. Look at those veins of fat running through it. That is one of the most, that might be the most beautiful piece of meat that I have ever seen in my entire life. And then there are some other different cuts here, um, all of them with just unbelievable looking marbleization and that is, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen more beautiful meat in my entire life. Gosh, I'm shaking. <laughs> For our first bites of the beef, it is recommended that we start with the filet mignon. And you can just hear that incredible sizzle as soon as it touched the grill. I'm almost, I'm almost shedding tears. This is my first strip of beef in Kobe, Japan, the source of the most outstanding beef in the entire world. And just look at that strip. Look at that, look at that oil. Look at, oh, oh, I, okay, I can't even, I, I'm like shaking. I'm actually, I'm actually shaking in anticipation of this first bite. And literally, I'm almost, I'm almost drooling on my t-shirt. And I'm gonna, I didn't even take a bite. Oh. I'm just, I actually just let my gums like slide together and it sliced through that piece of beef. That might be the most amazing thing I've ever tasted in my life. Okay, for this bite, I'm just gonna dip me, just me, a so tiny bit of salt on that. 
yeah, just that. Oh, just look at that beef. Okay, for the next course, we are eating a section of the skirt steak. That aroma is enough to just make you start drooling all over yourself. Oh, even when you press your chopsticks against it when, to pick it up, juice just squeezes out. Okay, and this one um, should be dipped just a little bit into that dark sauce. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculously good as well. That one is not as buttery as the other piece, the former piece, but it has that um, more like beefy texture of a skirt steak, but unbelievable flavor and unbelievable juice that squirted out on that bite. Okay, the next cut of beef that she's putting on is from the shoulder, and it's a little less fatty. You can see that redness. It's most more red meat, but still with a little bit of marbling going on, uh, but it will cook fast. Okay, and then for this one, I think I'm gonna dip it quickly into the soy sauce mustard. Just get a little bit of that on there. Oh, and look at all those seeds. Oh, beautiful. I apologize in advance if I don't know what I'm saying or if I mumble on my words because I am falling into a state of unconscious beef happiness right now. Next piece. Yes, that one has a little more of a pronounced beefy flavor to it. Still, and you can taste how it's leaner. You have more of the beef juice as opposed to the fat juice, but really unbelievable flavor. The moment has come for the most prized possession of the cow, which is that unbelievable marbleization piece. Oh, 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 oh my hands are shaking. This is the dessert course. This is that outrageously marbly, veiny piece that we saved for the end. And this is one of the most, yeah, one of the prizest possessions of Japanese beef ever. And it's so juicy. You can just, it's, as you pick it up, it's just dripping with driplets of juice and oil in the bottom of my bowl. It's, it's unbelievable. That is so buttery. That one I think is definitely the richest. When you eat that, it literally makes your taste buds just start to like gush with juices as they like, as they anticipate that, that flavor and that fat. I don't know if that made sense, but that is what I think is going on in my mouth as I'm trying to speak. After we finished all that glorious beef, it is now time to sample what is one of the specialties at this restaurant, which is a dry aged beef. And so you can see that, that block of beef and look, just look at that marbleization. I, I can hardly comprehend how, how beautiful a piece of meat is. We are now sampling some beef sashimi and this is a little bit of ginger and I'm gonna put it into the, the dipping sauce. It's a sweet, like a sweet soy sauce? Okay, a sweet soy sauce with fresh ginger in there. Oh, and I cannot wait to taste beef sashimi. This beef sashimi is from the rump, hind, hind leg area. And it's, it's actually semi, semi lean beef sashimi. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's so good. The beef is slightly chilled, and then, yeah, just really, really tender meat, really juicy, and I really like that, that fresh ginger flavor as well. The piece of dry aged beef is gonna go through a three-part cooking series, and so it's already cooked once, and then it left to sit and rest for a bit, and now this is on the second cook. It's now off the fire, and it's 
um, wrapped in some foil and it will sit for about five minutes until the next grill. <laughs> oh, he's getting ready to slice that dry aged beef. Look. Thank you for waiting. <laughs> Just look at that. It's, you can definitely tell it's a little drier than what we just ate, um, but the, the flavor is supposed to be more intense. This is the dessert on top of the dessert. Oh, I can smell that. Oh, that is absurd. It's definitely drier on the edges, but in the inside it's still juicy. And yeah, it definitely has a little bit of a cheesy flavor to it from that dry aged process. The depth of flavor in that beef is almost unbelievable. Normally I love spicy and I love sauces and I love everything, but this beef is so outrageously flavorful. You honestly do not need anything at all. It's my hobby. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a nice time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't say anything other than that was a life altering beef experience. And I want to say a massive thank you to Hiro and his wife, uh, Laura Lee, for their kindness and for bringing us to their restaurant. That was. Yeah, that was just an unbelievable beef life-changing experience. I'm I'm still like on a beef on a beef high right now. We are heading now to the train station and we are going to take the train to our next eating destination, I believe. We are off to go walk around an area called Akashi, which is known for their fish market, and we're just gonna wander around there and explore. Uh, just got our tickets for 180 yen. We just got off the train at Akashi Station, and this is home to a famous fish market and just food area, so this is our next point of exploration. I think it's been about an hour since we ate that beef, and literally, my taste buds are still, still salivating. My mouth is still watering from that beef. We made it to the market, and this market is very famous, or this whole area is very famous for octopus, so you can see on the top of the market rafters up there, Oh, not that, that's a fish, but on all these small little uh, signs, that's all octopus down there. Okay, so he gave me a sample of the octopus, and I will try this. Oh, oh, that's delicious. The octopus is very very tender, it has kind of a sweet soy sauce glaze on it, uh, which is very flavorful as well. Okay, and then this is a different type of octopus, the bigger one. Oh, oh that one is more, it's more sticky kind of, more gooey. One, two, oh, man. three, four. Arigato. <laughs> It is now time to eat what is one of the most famous things to eat at this market and in this area, which is called tamago yaki or akashi yaki. And it is the akashi version, this region's version of the famous takoyaki. And so it should be some kind of a octopus snack balls or more like an omelet, I believe.
They have just arrived hot and fresh and I love that presentation. They're just sitting on a slanted board. Thank you. They look like almost little cream puffs. And these are also eaten differently than takoyaki. You, you take one of the, the little balls or dumplings and oh that squishiness and you eat it with a bowl of soup and you stick it into the soup and then you kind of break it open um, just to release the hot steam as well as to unleash the well to unleash the hot steam and then also to um, kind of add that soup flavor to it and get more brothy but I think I might just kind of yeah, I may just, oh, oh, I think I lost my little piece of octopus in the soup. I think I will just eat that whole thing now that I've submerged it into the soup. Let's see if I can get this to my mouth in one bite. Mm. Inside is a very smooth, like, batter. And then you get that kind of, it almost has like a bacony flavor that that octopus, um, and then that soup. Let me just taste a little soup. Is the bacon flavor? Oh, it tastes very like like a smoked flavor. Maybe there are some bonito flakes or some kind of smoky fish flavor in the broth. It almost tastes like like a ball of mozzarella cheese that's been baked and then submerged in broth. It kind of has that kind of a not really elasticity, but kind of just a a really smooth batter, half cooked. We just finished with those octopus akashiyaki. I think they kind of tasted like bacon flavored cream puffs. We are back at the train station now and we're gonna catch a train back to Kobe. We got off the train and now we are walking through Kobe on our way somewhere. I think we are arriving to the Chinatown area. This place is very famous for their dumplings, pork dumplings. So we're gonna step in here just for a sample of their dumplings. So these are the famous dumplings of Kobe. Oh, look at that little guy. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's delicious. The bread is fluffy and a little bit sticky, and then the pork is just juicy and a little bit, you can taste the soy sauce and a, like a sesame flavor to it. Yeah, that's like a, a dim sum item. This is such a relaxing and pleasant Chinatown. It's just quiet, it's peaceful, nice place just to stroll around. We're just walking around and this is a little sake bar where we're gonna stop in and just check it out for a bit. Mostly we came into this little shop because it's so cool looking and so old school. And uh, the owner, uh, she's really friendly and really nice. And this is just, really has some character to it. But she says this, this kind of standing bar has been here for about 60 years. And she has a couple of drinks. I'm gonna try this thing called uh, soju. And it is kind of like a whiskey. Open, open that up. Aged 12 years. Oh, oh, it's been aged 12 years. Whoa, I didn't know it was that full because it's so light. Oh, yeah, that smells kind of like a like a less pungent whiskey. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, cheers. Okay, Mm -hmm. That tastes just like just like whiskey, but a little bit lighter, not as not as uh, sharp. She told me to add some water into the soju, and the water. I don't know if you can see these little black sticks in the bottom, but there's charcoal and bamboo in there to give it. Is that to just cleanse the to filter to filter the water? So it's really should be really purified water, the purified water. And she said it's very healthy. Oh yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, that, of course, miles it down um, with healthy water. And over there in the back of the restaurant, that is actually the menu. It's such an awesome menu. In the back, she is starting to cook. Oh, I can hear that sizzle. <laughs> we just ordered a little snack of eggplant, stir-fried with some pork, and it just smells incredibly fragrant with sesame oil made by grandma herself. Oh, 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 oh. oh it's so soft, hot dude. Oh, it's so soft and tender and buttery. Let me taste that pork now. It has a little bit of a vinegar flavor too. We are just leaving that little shop and that was really cool. The, the lady, the owner there was extremely friendly and really nice. And yeah, that was just a real classic little shop. We're just walking around this area in Kobe and all of a sudden there is a Kobe sauna and spa just on the side of the road and it's just public and you can you can just sit in here and soak your feet which we are about to do. That sounds like the perfect thing to do after all of that food. Okay. <laughs> oh that's hot. <laughs> like pure relaxation. <laughs> At first I thought this was just a heated pool, but it's actually from a hot spring, so it's natural hot water. Amazing. I am exiting the roadside spa right now. Oh, that was amazing. My feet feel so good. That public little spa was excellent, and now we are off to walk around again. We have just stepped into kind of a casino slash Arcade. This is like a photo booth slash karaoke spot. It feels like a spaceship. Wow, this was quite a quite a photo shoot experience. And now we can develop our photo. Oh, this is where you come to get your photos printed off. At this stage, you can also decorate your photo. It's almost like Snapchat. Okay, we just got our photos printed. Yeah, that was just a serious Japanese experience. Hilarious. This is the next spot that we're gonna stop in for a little bit of food, I think. And I think this is another grilled meat spot from the sign. Oh, that aroma of beef. Oh, it's like a meat sauna in here. I, I'm loving how in Japan you are indoors, but they have real charcoal to preserve that taste for grilling. And we ordered a couple items off the menu that we are going to grill in front of us. Okay, this is the piece of tongue and I'm going to take it right off the grill. And he recommended this sauce, which is a combination of wasabi and garlic. <coughs> It almost has a gizzardy texture to it, but not quite that chewy, or not quite that crisp. They just gave us the house specialty here, and it is a little quail egg, and that is a very finely shaved daikon radish. And you're supposed to add in a, just a dash of, this is citrus flavored soy sauce, and then you mix it all around that raw quail egg. I, I know. It tastes like 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 daikon juice and then just with that hint of citrus flavored soy sauce as well as that egg yolk that uh, quail egg yolk makes it richer. Okay, we are grilling some more parts and on the grill right now is esophagus. I don't know if I can ever say I've eaten esophagus before. So this may be a first for me. And it looks kind of like squid, but like more hairy. And what you're supposed to do is add a little bit of horseradish. So I'll add a little piece of horseradish. He recommended a quick dip into this sauce. Oh. <laughs> That's like squid, but 10 times chewier. Not chewier, but like crisper. Oh, wow. That is really intensely crisp. They have just given us the bone hats. I could just lean back anywhere and just take a nap. We are now walking back towards the train station. Thank you. I appreciate you opening, opening the restaurant. 
You're so patient. <laughs> you get an award for patience. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. That was an amazing day. We made it back to Umeda Station in Osaka and we are now walking back to our place but it has truly been a beef enriching experience on our day trip to Kobe and I want to say a major major big thank you to Laura Lee and her husband Hiro for taking the time to show us around Kobe as well as feeding us that Kobe beef, a beef changing experience. Uh, but yeah, just a, a really great day trip. So I'm gonna end the vlog here for today. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And we'll see you tomorrow for the next video vlog from Japan.